Welcome back. I am Olivia with Olivia's Herbatic Home. And in today's video, I am so excited to share with you guys 40 DIY Dollar Tree and budget friendly decor crafts. So this is a huge binge worthy compilation video of all of the projects we have done so far for the Easter spring decor season. Now listen, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Olivia's Romantic Home Facebook page. Also remember you guys can change up these projects by changing the paint color or the ribbon color to match your style or home decor. Now without further ado, let's go ahead and plug in those glue guns. Get out your glitter and paint and let's get to crafty. You guys are gonna love this super adorable, easy Dollar Tree pizza pan Easter decor idea. So from the Dollar Tree, grab a pizza pan and from the crafter square section, grab some of their cute burlap fabric and then simply hot glue that burlap fabric to the front of your pizza pan. And then for this one, I'm actually also going to hot glue it in and around the edge of the back. I want it to be all the way covered. The next thing I grabbed from Dollar Tree was this cute Easter sign. And this is leftover from last season, but I'm guessing they're gonna have some super adorable ones this year as well. Also from the Dollar Tree, I have this cute wired ribbon. It's actually from the Dollar Tree Plus section, and I'm going to take the ribbon and loop it over on itself six times to make three loops on each side. This is my magical easiest bow you'll ever make and it comes out so amazing and adorable. And then once I have all of those loops, you can see those ribbons off to the side. These I believe are left over from last year and I want to say maybe I got them at Michael's, but I'm repurposing and reusing them. You can see they're a little bunchy, you know, kind of like uh, but anyway, we're going to make it work. So I just took looped them over on itself and then I'm tying them off in the center. And then you want to really give your bow a really good fluffing. So I like to pre fluff my bow, then I'll hot glue it or tie it onto whatever item I'm creating. And then I'll fluff it some more. I want to trim off those edges. I really want to make sure it looks really adorable. Then I used the extra bit of ribbon left and put that around the edge and the side. And then I'm going to take some pretty green. I actually found some with my daughter when we went thrift store shopping this weekend and it's absolutely perfect for this project so get creative and use what you have or just grab some pretty fun spring greenery. that little Dollar Tree Easter carrot to the base and then some little greenery around the base and check out how adorable this is you guys it's so easy to do it's so budget friendly you simply need a little sign a pizza pan some floral and some little ribbon and then you just can go for it so you have fun with it get creative your kiddos can even kind of help you design this or with the bow or you know just with some of the easier stuff i think this is so fun very budget friendly and it would also make a great little gift idea and it's a perfect little decor piece for any space you could even put a little wire on the back and hang it on a wall or put it on a little easel or stand um, it would go cute with little books just all that kind of fun stuff so happy crafting and i hope you guys try this one Let's create a super adorable Dollar Tree centerpiece. And this is going to be amazing, very budget friendly. So from the Dollar Tree, grab one of their cute little chargers. I chose this blue and white check. And then I added a piece of styrofoam to the center and then hot glued this cute little sign to the top. Then I'm going to take this greenery. I actually found it at the thrift store, but it's so bright and pretty. It makes me feel so spring fabulous. Oh my gosh, I'm so ready for winter to be done, you guys. And I just clipped it apart branch by branch. I believe it originally came from Michael's or Hobby Lobby. And um, then I'm just kind of picking it in and around the base of my centerpiece and back kind of behind the little sign because the sign is kind of tall. So I'm going to continue to add in the greenery and that's something that I would really like to encourage you guys to do is to kind of add your greenery first before you add in a lot of your florals when you're creating a floral centerpiece and you guys can really get creative I love to do kind of whimsical decor ideas and you don't have to necessarily use the sign but I just thought it was a cute fun way to jazz up this centerpiece it might be a little tall but this is what I had on hand, so this is what I'm going to work with. I then added this adorable 
adorable bunny from the Target Dollar Spot. And then I'm going to add in some more greenery and, you know, just have fun with it. Get creative, you guys. This is going to be so fun and just bright and cheery. I'm telling you guys, when I started doing my Easter crafting, I got so excited for spring. Comment and let me know what your favorite part of spring is. Let's light up this comment section with goodness and happiness and joy and love. Drop your favorite scripture down below. I'm looking forward to our Easter Sunday and just so much hope and future um, joy. So I'm going to take these two little bunny, um, they're really cute little bunny, Easter bunny um, legs. They come two to a pack and I think they were fun just to pop into here to make it kind of whimsical. And then I just took some little egg garland that I had been clipping off from a Hobby Lobby garland, pop that e into either side and bam. I didn't add any bows to this, but you guys could very easily add a super cute little bow to this. I did a lot of DIYs on this day, so I just had to kind of keep it within a manageable um, time frame. But anyway, I'm also adding in some of these cute little kind of white spring flowers. And I just feel like this turned out so adorable, so fun, so happy. And I'm going to include the rest of these DIYs in this YouTube video. And then I'll also be um, kind of chopping them up and putting them on Facebook for you guys to view as well. So you guys can get daily crafting inspiration and weekly crafting inspiration. I want you guys to have fun, get creative and happy crafting. Okay, you guys have to try this super adorable candlestick centerpiece idea. So I grabbed a candlestick that I had on hand. I found it originally from a thrift store. And then I took the spotter screen from the Dollar Tree, removed the little inner part um, with a screwdriver, and then added in a paper plate. We're gonna set our bunny on top of the paper plate. And then just a little greenery wreath around that. Found that one at Walmart. And then I'm gonna take this wired satin ribbon and create a quick little loopy bow. This is super easy use whatever colors you love this of course is going to be for easter so i'm going to keep it very pastel i'm just going to do one loop on this but you guys feel free to go crazy with your bow i'm starting to run low on my pastel ribbon i'm really trying to use what i have so just um, use what you have in your craft stash or go grab some new ribbon whatever suits your fancy so i'm going to take this sheer pink ribbon and i looped it over on itself again and then i'm layering my white ribbon on top of the pink ribbon and then I'm just taking some scrap ribbon um, I had left over from a couple years ago. And then I'm just going to loop that into my little layers of ribbon here. I'm trying to go a little bit slow for this process. You guys can kind of see how easy it is just to take ribbon loops, layer them on top of each other, pinch it in the center. And then I take a zip tie and zip tie that baby all together. That way my loops don't move around. I can fluff it and pull it and it's nice on there. It's also really easy on my hands, which my fine motor skills because the carpal tunnel I have in my hands have been really bothering me. So anyway, to get this onto my little wreath, I'm going to take a piece of ribbon and just wrap that around the wreath and then wrap that around the bow. Super easy peasy. You guys can totally do this. Um, and then I'm going to take and make like a little shoelace bow because that ribbon loop was kind of long and it also has been reused so you can see it's a little scrunchy on there. You guys can take an iron and um, just kind of iron out your ribbon if you want it to be a little bit more smooth if you're repurposing and reusing it. I'm also going to add in some pretty little roses, some Dollar Tree lilacs, and then just some little eggs from an egg garland I grabbed at Hobby Lobby. And bam, we have the most adorable blooming candlestick Easter centerpiece you will ever find. I did one of these back in fall with a pumpkin. You can do them for Valentine's Day, do one for Christmas. So super fun and fabulous on a total budget. Happy crafting. I hope you guys are inspired. Okay, you guys have to run to your Dollar Tree and grab some of these super adorable little beaded garlands and these cute 
check gingham bunnies oh my goodness i was so stoked when i found these i just happened to pop into one of my random dollar trees in the area and they were there so anyway what i want to do is i want to take two of these garlands and just take a little floral wire twist it together this is going to be the cutest garland and it's three dollars and 75 cents you guys can't go wrong with that so you put your two pieces of garland together and then i want to take my little bunnies and i want to spread them out i want to make sure it's mostly even along the garland i think this would be really great for a mantle now i do have all my valentine's day decor up so i don't i'm not going to be showing you guys the finished product with it in a total like easter mantle setting but it even looks cute like laying on um you know just like a little table so anyway what i want to do is take some of these little floral wire pieces and hot glue them to the back of the benny ears and then i'm just using um the ends of my wire cutters to kind of tamp that down and then I'm going to simply wrap the wire around um, the garland a couple of times and you can just trim off the excess wire. I am using also a really fine wire. You can go to Hobby Lobby or even on Amazon and they have different um, thickness of floral wire. I like to get some of the finest wire that's really thin. It really makes it great for projects like these when you don't want the wire to be super visible. So I'm going to continue to hot glue the little wires on the back of the bunnies and then I'm going to try to space them out. I counted about 11 beads down to space them out. And I think I only ended up using five of these so they would be more even. Um, but anyway, this is such an easy budget friendly DIY. You could do this with your kiddos and I think it would be so, so, so cute. Also for a baby's room or a bridal shower table. Think about how cute that would be. You could double down on your garland too and make it super long if you have a really big space you're decorating for. So very fun and fabulous and very, very budget friendly. Okay, and here is the finished product. This is so adorable, so easy to do. And can I tell you guys how excited I am to be back on my feet crafting this year? If you guys remember last year, I broke my ankle at this time and I completely missed out on four months of crafting. So I'm really excited to be back and I'm also excited to share my room. Let's turn some trash into treasure. We're gonna create a jumbo Easter egg out of this a cardboard box. So I'm just taking one side of the cardboard box. I traced it into a circle just to kind of get a rough idea on the circular shape. And then I'm gonna take my scissors and kind of shape it into an oval. I decided to go with a semi pink chalk paint and I painted it um, with two layers of the pink chalk paint on both sides of my box. The next thing I'm doing is taking this marker and just making polka dot circles. I'm going to go back in with some white chalk paint and just paint it with some circles and also with the hue of the paint color with the pink I ended up going back in and painting it a little bit more of a dusty pink I think I'm gonna go with kind of a dusty pink and blues and greens shabby chic kind of Easter um, flow so anyway I'm taking and I'm just um, painting the little polka dots and you guys could do stripes you don't even have to do the polka dots but we're gonna make this jumbo Easter egg I want to make several of these. I did these with the hearts for Valentine's Day. And my idea for, you know, my crafting is to really start creating things that I can um, use without having, or creating decor without having to spend a lot of money and also make it really easy to store. So because I'm, you know, creating all those hearts out of cardboard boxes, I can simply stack them all together and they'll be really easy to store. So we're gonna do the same thing with some of the Easter decor, especially if I do a big Easter tree. I don't wanna have tons and tons of extra decorations. And I also like the idea of recycling. Okay, so from the thrift store, I grabbed several bags of this pretty lace and I'm just using this trim and I'm hot gluing it in and around 
my little Easter egg. You can also grab lace and trim at Hobby Lobby on clearance. You can also look for old clothing that might have a pretty lace or a trim on it that you could trim off. These are just ideas you guys might have. The other thing I did when I did my hearts is I trimmed my hearts with the faux um, icing spackling. I am out of my spackling right now, so I'm going to get some more of that and probably do some giant, you know, cookie Easter egg type looking things. But here is how it is looking so far. I think it's absolutely awesome. All I had to have was some paint, some creativity, and then some pretty trim, and then of course glue and scissors. But this is a craft that you guys could totally do with your grandkids. You don't even have to do the trimming on the outside. This is just really extra. I did run a little bit low on that trim because these are just scraps of trim so I'm taking and making like a little pretty lacy bow and then I added like a little Victorian kind of detail piece trim to it here is how it turned out so fun and fabulous and so budget friendly because basically it's we're just turning trash into treasure so I hope you guys are loving this and are totally inspired and looking forward to spring and Easter crafting Let me share with you how we're going to jazz up this $1 cross from the Dollar Tree. So from the Dollar Tree Crafter Square section, I bought this little wooden cross. I believe these were a dollar, but now they've been raised to $1.25. But I'm just going to take and take some chalk paint and simply chalk paint my cross white. It is already a wooden color, so this step is optional, but you can paint them whatever color you love. I'm really going to be going with a really pretty cottage kind of shabby shape. Easter um, decor style for this year so I'm going to do a lot of pastels which I think is perfect for Easter um, I did end up using two coats of chalk paint so I like to use the Waverly chalk paint from Walmart and do a coat and then let it dry and then put another coat on and then you guys can really get creative with the um, detailing that you want to do with this I was recently at the thrift store and they had little bags sectioned out in their craft section with lace so I had grabbed a couple of bags of lace and I'm going to end up using that on this cross which I thought made it look really pretty and just kind of romantic and whimsical so I'm running a strip of lace down one side of my cross and then the same kind down the other side and this lace just kind of happened to be this the same width of my cross so here is how it looks so far once I have that done. Now I wanted to possibly put a jewel on there. I love Natalie at totallydazzled.com for her little jewels. Um, but then I decided I want to put a little bit more trim on. And this trim is just kind of detailed. If you guys go into Hobby Lobby, go to their um, sewing section and you can find all kinds of really pretty trim. And a lot of times they'll um, have a 40% off sale when it's time for bridal, which is going to be spring stuff. So you can find a lot of their bridal pretty ornate trim on sale so that's just a little tip if you guys need trim also don't forget to look in your thrift store crafting section you know for some pretty trims as well so once I had that done I thought it was looking really pretty still wasn't for sure what the next detail was going to be but I have this pretty trim that has like this little scallop Victorian um, piece that kind of comes down so I decided to just go with that and leave it really clean and simple you guys, I love Easter and Jesus is definitely the reason for this season. And so I just wanted to celebrate that with this beautiful um, cross. It's so decorative, so pretty. And I'm going to share with you guys the hearts and the little tin and another DIY. But I hope you guys are loving this and are totally inspired and happy crafting. For this DIY, I want to create a really pretty little shabby romantic container. So from the Dollar Tree, I have one of their flower garden containers. They have these every season and I've done so many different crafts with them. I'm going to take this pretty ballet pink. It's by Waverly chalk paint and I have it in this little seasonings jar just to make it look really pretty but I'm going to take and I am going to coat my little Dollar Tree tin with two coats of the Valley Pink chalk paint. You guys could use really any color of paint that you love. 
I just want to make a storage container, honestly, you guys, for my remote controls. Um, they're always in my living room. They're always scattered about, and I want to be doing kind of like a really pretty romantic um, shabby chic or love shack fancy inspired Easter this year and so I'm going to be doing a lot of pastel a lot of roses kind of a throwback to what I originally started my YouTube and crafting journey on with a lot of really pretty romantic colors and um, and also if you guys aren't doing a lot of romantic and pastel colors that's okay too you could easily paint this black or brown or green or whatever color you might want to create a pretty storage container for I did also end up painting the interior of this that way it just looks pretty on the inside I've also lined these with fabric with moss just all different kinds of things you guys can imagine I have done with these little Dollar Tree tins. Um, so funny to think about how many years of crafting I have done with you guys on this YouTube channel. Six years. Um, so anyway, I'm going to take a little sponge and I just dabbed a little white paint on that and I'm just going to rub that over the flowers and gardens part so you can see that so it's not just flush with the pink and that kind of gives it that little bit of shabby chic distressing I'm not sure how much I'll be able to live with the pink I usually like more neutral but I think for Easter I love just digging my heels in with the pastels the next thing I wanted to do was take this pretty little trim and I'm going to hot glue the trim in and around the entire container and I did find this trim at the thrift store um, you guys can also check flea markets you can check the crafting section at Walmart they have it Hobby Lobby all that kind of fun stuff look for the trims at Hobby Lobby when they go 40% off and you get some really good deals And here is how my beautiful little container turned out. I think it looks so gorgeous and fabulous and it's going to be so, so perfect for my shabby chic love shack fancy inspired Easter decor that I'm going to be doing this year. I know that the romance and the romantic things are back. So here it is with all my remotes in it as well. <laughs> Okay, Valentine's Day lovers, don't come for me, but I'm going to take these little Valentine's Day $1 um, plaques that I found at Dollar General, and I'm actually going to paint them. Oh, it's kind of hard to paint over them. They were so cute, and I did use them for my Valentine's Day decor this year, but Valentine's Day is almost over, and so... I'm just going to go ahead and repurpose and reuse these because I bought too many of these and I'm just going to paint them with two coats of my Waverly white chalk paint. I want to make them into a romantic, um, just cottage decor piece. So I really feel like you can get away with hearts all year long if you love, if you're like me and you love romantic decor. Next thing I'm going to do is take this pretty lace. It's just a pretty wide lace piece and I'm going to simply cut two pieces and then hot glue that on top of the heart just to make a little romantic um, piece. You know, I think that we should always try to bring a semblance of romance into our lives. If you guys are like me, I love pretty dresses. I love romance. I love lace and flowers and all of those beautiful things. And sometimes I think it's easy to get out of the habit of decorating with those things, but I think it's so pretty to bring them back. I'm bringing some back into my home this year. I will eventually have a wedding coming up with my son and his girlfriend, Skylar. I'm super excited about that. That might be why I'm starting to think about hearts and bridal laces and then eventually I will have grandchildren and I'm really looking forward to you know having little girls and guys you know toys and pretties around and you know making decor for their nurseries and the bridals and the baby showers so I guess that's maybe why I'm feeling all that romance hopefully there's going to be a wedding this year for my son and his girlfriend or coming up soon I know he wants to finish graduating college but anyway 
I'm adding some more trims in and around the edge of my pretty heart and I added one to the front and then that's really you know going to be it for this heart I'm not getting too crazy with it you can get some beautiful Victorian appliques and really go crazy with these with the ruffles um, and that kind of fun thing and I actually used to have an Etsy shop where I sold high-end Victorian decor where I would put ruffles and bows and over-the-top lace and roses all over everything and I had you know a specialty just group of clients that would buy my stuff almost immediately after I posted them and I did that for years and that's kind of how I got started at sharing my crafting journey but anyway feel free to add all the trims and baubles that you love and here is how it turned out I think it looks really pretty I ended up making two of them and I have one sitting next to my coffee spot in the morning where I love to drink my coffee and just that reminder of romance you know God loves us and we're called to love others so having those hearts around me the cross is just so sweet and so inspiring and there's that cute little uh, bridal book that I got um, just to be taking a look at bridal stuff for this DIY, we are going to do a thrift flip on this cute little lamp that I found at the thrift store. I actually found two of these. They were matching. They were two lamps for $20. And I looked at them and I saw that the ornate detail was just going to be really, really pretty. They went perfectly in with my Christmas design. And I had that pretty little red ribbon tied around it. But for spring... I'm going to go in for it and I'm going to paint it white and I'm probably possibly going to go back in and distress it and maybe even change out the shade. I would love to find a pretty little romantic roses shade, but um, for all of you guys that like the more neutral or the darker decor, I'm so, so sorry, but I am painting this. The only reason I don't feel guilty about it is because I got them for so cheap um, and I think it's going to be pretty for spring. I really want to do a shabby chic cottage look in my home for spring and that those are my roots. Um, this is Olivia's romantic home and I always decorated in a romantic style with tons of just beautiful um, roses and pastels and Victorian um, goodness. So I'm kind of going to throw back to that a little bit this next season. I hope you guys are ready for some romance. Um, but if you like different types of decor or paint colors, please feel free to paint your lamps any color that you love. I love taking items that I already have and finding a new vision and using paint to do that with. So whatever color scheme you have in your home, whether it be farmhouse, modern farmhouse, Victorian, um, you know, um, coastal, traditional, whatever you guys love, go with that. You don't have to do what I'm doing, but these are just inspirations, you know, to give you guys some ideas so here is how it turned out what do you guys think about the shade stain on it it's kind of an oatmeal color which I think it looked fine I don't know if I should add some pretty lace to the shade or what but I do love just kind of the really pretty romantic colors now I am hosting a $100 Hobby Lobby gift card giveaway so you guys don't want to miss out on that what is your favorite pastel color? If you were to pick an Easter egg and you were sitting down and dyeing an Easter egg, what color would you drop your Easter egg into that little dye cup? Let me know. Mine is probably going to be pink, if you guys can't tell. And then here is that beautiful bridal dress. I got this at the thrift store. It was like a dollar, and I just couldn't help myself. I was like, oh, I know we're going to be wedding dress shopping soon for my son's girlfriend in the next year or so. So I'm getting in the mood already. Skylar, if you're watching this, I love you. Um... And then my puppy dog, Benji Bear, of course, he is always wanting to be the star of the show. And he is my creative director. Here's all those roses, too, that I've been making out of coffee filters. Here's his little toy. It has a strawberry. It was a Valentine's Day toy that I got for him. And I threw it earlier and it accidentally landed in his water dish. So anyway, we love you guys so, so much. And we're going to say hi to all the puppy dogs and kitty cat fans out there. I know some of you guys have been posting pictures of your um, animals on uh, the Facebook group page. It's Olivia's Romantic Home Facebook group page. And I just love seeing you guys' posts. So anyway, Benji Bear says, hello, roof, roof. We love you guys so, so much. Thank you so much for being here. 
let's create a super easy and adorable Dollar Tree lantern wreath bow topper. So from the Dollar Tree, I grabbed this $1.25 ribbon. I'm simply gonna loop it over on itself four times, trim it off, and do the same thing with the second set of Dollar Tree ribbon. The first one is the blue check gingham. It's super adorable, run to Dollar Tree and grab some. And then they have out this new little ribbon that has pastel bunnies on it. I think it's so fabulous. And then I'm just gonna simply zip tie both of the pieces of ribbon together and fluffy out the bow. So I bought this um, lantern at Hobby Lobby a couple of years ago and it has been a great one. The next thing I want to do is take the remainder of the ribbon and use that for tails and then I'm just going to zip tie the entire thing onto the top of my super adorable lantern. Now you don't necessarily have to use this bow for a lantern. You could use it for a garland, for a wreath, pretty much anything that suits your fancy that you need a big pretty bow on. I'm going to give my bows a little bit of a twirl and then dovetail the ends and I simply do that by cutting a triangle shape in an upwards direction with my scissors and ribbon. That's going to give you a nice little fancy um, bow. Now I love this set of bows but I thought it needed a little bit of burlap color to kind of break up. I felt like it looked a little bit too much like a baby room bow. So I'm using this Dollar Tree wired ribbon. It's a burlap color. And again, I just took the ribbon, looped it over on itself, added in some tails. I'm going to zip tie that really great in the center here. I might use this for outdoors. Another great reason to use zip ties. And then I'm simply going to zip tie the entire thing together. What do you guys think? Do you think that the burlap ribbon kind of broke up the pastels or did you like it just all with the pastels? Now I'm taking some little leftover florals. I'm adding some hot glue, popping those into the center part of the ribbon. And then Dollar Tree has these super adorable little bunny legs and I think they look perfect coming out of the bow. I hot glued those in and then grabbed a couple of, couple of little plastic Easter eggs. Again, these are come in like a 12 pack at Dollar Tree. They're cute. They're pretty. Um, and then I'm going to add a little Dollar Tree Bunny inside and then some of these flickering flameless candles from Amazon. I'll leave the link um, to my Amazon account in my description box, which is Olivia's Romantic Home Amazon, or you can go and search flickering flameless candles. I do suggest to use flickering flameless candles if you have small children or pets. They're super safe. They are battery operated, but they come with a little remote timer. You guys can easily turn them on and off or set them on a timer where they're only on for a certain amount of time but here is the final look i think it's fun and fabulous all of the toppings came from dollar tree of course the lantern was from hobby lobby you guys can grab those 40 percent off um look for your sale cattle locker you can go online and look and happy crafting For this Dollar Tree DIY, we're going to create a super adorable little bunny bowl. So from the Dollar Tree, grab a little white bowl and grab one of the stuffed bunnies. And you're simply going to trim the bunny in half. And sorry for all of you furry friend lovers, but we are going to make this super adorable. Now I'm going to take my little bunny top and I'm just going to glue the stuffing in. And be careful on this part, but you're just going to glue the stuffing part of the bunny. And then you're going to hot glue Mr. Bunny to the side of your candy bowl. I created this and then when my daughter came home I showed it to her and I was so excited I was like oh my gosh look how adorable this is and I had popped some eggs in and she was like mom why aren't there candy in here so anyway I'm gonna have to go pick up some fun Easter candy I don't really keep a whole lot of candy around the house but anyway back to the DIY um, I'm just gonna take my little bunny hands and you want to stretch the bunny arm around the side of the bowl that's gonna get your bunny to sit more upright on the bowl like he's holding the candy bowl and I just thought this was so cute and fun and then you're gonna do the same thing to other side of the bunny bowl and I actually I actually saw this DIY on one of my socials somewhere floating around and I'm so so sorry I can't remember who posted it but if you know who posted it please tag them down below but I just thought it was a super cute idea and I think I might even be doing it a little bit differently but it just popped into my brain and I happen to have the <laughs> supplies on hand I think you should also go ahead and hot glue the front of the bunny body and that's going to keep him on there and here is how that looks so far and I think it's super adorable you can also take and trim off his little feetsies and just simply hot glue those on the end. I actually tried this several ways. I tried it with more of the stuffing on and it looked a bit strained. <laughs> 
so but you could try it you know with the stuffing on you can see where I had removed that part and then I'm re-gluing the feet on I personally like it better with the feet I also tried it with like the longer bunny legs maybe that's how I originally saw the DIY but again it seemed like it was just a little bit too long so I'm probably going to use this at my entryway table or I also think it'd be really cute to use in a bathroom and put like put like some cute little soaps or hair scrunchies or really anything Easter related or if you just love bunnies I think this would also be super adorable for a kid's room um and then I think I even added one more dabble of hot glue but here is how Mr. Bunny is looking so far Dollar Tree has this um let's see eight 10, I don't know. It's a bunch of eggs. They're super cute pastel colors and I simply pop those in. You could fill those eggs with candy, which I'm going to do for my daughter. She was disappointed about the no candy part. But anyway, I think, I hope you guys love this. I think it's adorable. Um, let me know what you guys think and happy crafting. Let me share with you how to create this super beautiful, easy spring cottage wreath. This is going to be a super romantic wreath, so get ready. Okay, so from Walmart, I had grabbed this lamb's ear, um, just base. It was left over from Christmas. I got it on clearance, and then I added part of a Hobby Lobby garland to it. Then I'm adding this beautiful play saucer. I'm just going to simply zip tie everything to the wreath base, and I added in a little bit of hot glue. Then I'm taking some of my coffee filter roses I hot glued um, little clothespins to the backs of my roses so they could stick into my wreath but then I could also remove them if I decide to change things up now to get the little hook on the back of the plate saucer you're simply going to take some e6000 glue a paper clip um, and then a piece of duct tape and I will leave at the end of this video a quick little tutorial on that now to create Create my bow I'm using this beautiful Hobby Lobby ribbon they have it out right now in the Easter section and it has beautiful roses on it I'm going to create a super easy bow by taking the ribbon loops loop them over on themselves six times and then find your center and then I'm going to zip tie the center of that and fluffy those loops out I'm going to repeat the same process with the satin ribbon, but I think I only did four loops um, on this one because I was kind of running low on that satin ribbon, and this is wired ribbon left over from Christmas. So once I have the loops created on that, I'm just going to simply zip tie the entire thing together and then onto the wreath. Once I had the bow attached, I took another piece of ribbon. I actually took the satin ribbon, layered that on top of the roses ribbon, and then with a zip tie, I simply zip tied it and then just kind of gathered it and did a little bit more zip tying to kind of ruch it and swag it down and around the wreath base. And then I had this bundle of florals from Hobby Lobby. And side note here, all of their spring florals are 40% off, so they're super great deal you guys and then I just added some little detail touches here and there with just the ends of the ribbon don't forget to dovetail your ribbon to make it a nice clean edge and bam we have a fabulous spring wreath this is very budget friendly try to use what you have and if you guys can try to make those coffee filter roses so the majority of these florals are those coffee filter roses they definitely save quite a bit they're a little bit time consuming but I'm able to do about 10 to 15 in an hour's time I just put on a show and have fun and happy crafting
For this Dollar Tree DIY, we're gonna make a super easy little gingham Easter bunny napkin holder. So from the Dollar Tree, they're carrying these super adorable pink check gingham little Easter bunnies. I think they're so cute. I grabbed two packs of them. I just love the color pink. You guys know I love pink. And I'm going to simply just hot glue them on to these napkin rings. I found the napkin rings at a thrift store in a pack, but Dollar Tree has napkin rings and you guys could also use little shower curtain rings, wrap them with some twine, and then hot glue your little bunny boo to that. And I'm going to take this napkin. This is just a decorative napkin. And I'm going to simply fold it in an accordion style fold back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And I do believe I shared this fold with you guys back in the fall um i need to look up some new napkin folds comment down below and let me know if you guys have any fun ideas for folding napkins and what your tips tricks and hacks are or if you just like a very simple little elegant napkin for your tablescape i need to do an easter tablescape for you guys soon coming up but here is how this is going to look popped into my little bunny boo napkin ring holder i think it looks super adorable you're gonna fan the top out and then there's several different ideas you guys can do without breaking the bank for creating an Easter tablescape and I'm going to share with you guys a couple of different ideas. Um, for some reason I have a hard time doing this napkin fold sometimes. Okay but bear with me give me grace. So from Hobby Lobby I grabbed some 59 cent little um, check papers and then I'm using this Dollar Tree charger, a thrift store play, and then this cute little Hobby Lobby pink and checking bunny and then here is my little bunny boo on that. You could also add like an egg garland to your table centerpiece. Here's a another idea using that same check um it's just a piece of paper but anyway Hobby Lobby had these um, round woven baskets on clearance last season. I'm adding a white plate. Again, my little bunny check plate. That was from Hobby Lobby. And adding my little bunny boo napkin on. I don't know why I'm saying bunny boo. I guess it just rhymes or it sounds cute, but bear with me. <laughs> I like to make up little things and I do say the word little a lot. Apologies if that does not float your boat, but my mom always said it. So I think I picked it up from her. I'm adding in a cute little carrot and then Hobby Lobby has these super adorable bunnies. They're super inexpensive. Go grab some. They're 40% off now. And then there's a garland idea, which I'm going to share with you guys in the next DIY. I think it turned out super adorable. So many fun ideas you guys can do for Easter. I really need to get out all of my tablescape decorating ideas. But I can't wait to share with you guys. You don't have to break the bank to have a fabulous, amazing table, home, and decor idea. And happy crafting. For this DIY, we're going to take the coffee filter roses that I shared with you as how to do in my last video. And if you guys haven't seen that, go check it out. Um, I'll try to repost it or leave a link in the description box below, but you simply make roses out of coffee filters. And you can see this is what I've been doing in my spare time on Friday night. I'll put on a show and just go to town making coffee filter roses. But what I'm doing is taking mini clothespins. I found the mini ones at Hobby Lobby and I'm hot gluing them to the back of my coffee filter roses. I'm doing this because I do want to use these in my Easter decor, but I want to have the ability to remove them from garlands and um, be able to store them and reuse them for like Christmas or, you know, different, you know, wreaths or different things like that. So anyway, it just seems like a pretty logical thing to do. And plus it just makes it easy to pop onto garlands or wreaths. And so anyway, I did a ton of these and then here is a really pretty garland. I found it at Hobby Lobby. It was $24.99 I believe and then those are 40% off so I feel like that was a pretty good deal I think that made it oh gosh about $18 but I think this is a really pretty garland because I feel like it's really whimsical and you can simply just take your little coffee filter roses and pin them on you can also add some greenery to the backs of your roses which I did on some and the jury's still out on which ones I like better I think that this looks really cute um the clothespins can kind of show some but if I had this like attached to a mirror or a mantle or wherever I'm going to put it I could definitely kind of arrange them around where you couldn't see them or you could simply hot glue some leaves in and around those areas but here is how this is looking and I just wanted to give this as an idea to you guys because I had somebody comment and say that 
my DIYs just seemed really expensive now and they couldn't do them on a budget anymore. And I really want you guys to know that with a little bit of time and creativity, you can make beautiful decor. These roses were next to nothing. I dyed them with a little tiny bit of craft paint and it just takes time and some creativity. And I know not everybody has time to do something like this, but I just want you to know that you can have beautiful decor on a budget. So here's, an, here's the idea for hot gluing leaves to the back of them after you have the clothes pins on. I did that on a bunch of them because I didn't want the clothespins to show, but it was pretty time consuming. And although I did just take an hour in the evening when I just had some spare time and kind of had fun with it. Um, I like making handmade decor. To me, it is just, you know, really just, it shows love in my home. And I know that I made it with my hands. It keeps me busy. And also you guys, it helps me with, with anxiety and depression. When I feel anxious, I start crafting. And so I've had some anxious things going on in my life. So you guys can see the pile of coffee filter roses that I made. Um, but anyway, go back and check out that tutorial. Now here is your favorite puppy dog, Benji Bear. We have had the opportunity to go on so many nice spring day walks. You guys, it's been so nice out today. It was 73. And if you guys have ever had a terrier, even taking him for two walks a day, look at how busy he is. This is in the evening right before I started editing and he still wants to play. He's squeaking his little squeaky toy. Now it's gotten later as we're speaking. I'm doing this voiceover and he's sound asleep. But roof, roof and hello. We love you guys to all those puppy dog and kitty cat fans out there. Benji Bear says hello and he loves you guys so, so much. Let's create a beautiful Dollar Tree Easter cross wreath. So from the Dollar tree I grabbed one of their cross wreath forms and then I'm using two rolls of deco mesh I'm simply going to zip tie the deco mesh to the base of the wreath and twist it around the entire wreath form I'm going to do that I'm going to spiral twist it all the way up not really spiral twist just basically twist it around the wreath twist it all the way back down and then twist it all the way back up again you guys could also use ribbon I didn't have any white or burlap ribbon on hand so I'm just using using the deco mesh. I went all the way to the top with it and then I'm gonna tie it off again with another zip tie and I'm gonna start a new loop in and around the cross arm parts. And again, you just twist it around several times until you get the coverage that you want and you can simply zip tie it on either end. This is super simple to do and of course, remember you guys can easily um, use ribbon or whatever you have on hand. I've even cut fabric and done that as well. And so then once I had that done, I'm going to make a really simple bow. So I'm going to take this Dollar Tree ribbon and loop it over on itself four times. This is the Dollar Tree Easter ribbon. It's kind of that gingham check um, pattern, which I thought would be super pretty for Easter. I'm going to set that aside and then take some of the pink wired burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree, loop that over on itself. I only was able to loop it over on itself I believe twice because I was running low on these other ribbons and I did that with the burlap as well and then I'm going to simply layer them all together I'm going to pinch them in the center and then zip tie the center of that to create my bow I did leave some extra ribbon on the rolls to make some pretty tails so I'm going to zip tie this to the center of the cross, but I did it kind of off to the side to create just a little bit of dimension, I guess, instead of putting it directly in the center. I did it kind of at a slant or an angle. I added in my tails and then I'm going to dovetail the ribbon on the bottom of my tail. So to dovetail it, you just cut a little triangle in the base. I had some greenery left over from another project, so I'm adding that to the bottom part of my bow and then some more to the top. And then I cut apart a little hydrangea piece of flower. I'm using one of my coffee filter roses. I hot glued that into the center and then added a little bit of Dollar Tree. Um, floral just pick in there and then here is the finished product and I think it came out really really beautiful I am a faith you know God loving girl and so I thought this was just so so pretty I'm gonna use it in my Easter decor I get a lot of requests for cross or faith decor so here you go I love y'all and God bless you so much For this Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take this Easter egg wreath and I'm going to flip it over that way on the 
one side I could still use it if I wanted to but I really want to do something a little different to this side so I'm just going to take some Mod Podge this is the waterproof Mod Podge and I'm going to simply take this pretty gingham check pink and white paper that I found at Hobby Lobby it was 59 cents and then it was 40% off of that so super great deal and then I just Mod Podged it onto the little Easter egg form and then I'm letting, adding a layer of Mod Podge over that. Um, you could also use a blank, um, you know, egg shape if they have those at Dollar Tree. I didn't see any at my store. It was, I don't think they had all their Easter stuff set out. But anyway, now I'm going to take a little bit of chalk paint and simply kind of outline um, my egg with some chalk paint and then trim off the excess paper. I was in a little bit of a hurry. I should have let everything dry, but I was really trying to get this tutorial out for you guys. I had done some of these actually on my day off on Sunday, um, just kind of in lieu and getting ready for my Easter decorating. Um, to kind of see how I wanted things to look. So I did already have some of these done, but I really wanted to share a tutorial with you guys in case you guys want to change up any of your Easter decor. I think this pink and white paper is beautiful. You guys could always use you know, black and white paper, green and white paper, whatever paper you want to make a pretty egg with. Then I'm going to take some of this lace that I found in a bag at my local flea market. I found a big old bag of it for $2.50. It was such a blessing. And I'm just going to hot glue the lace in and around my egg. I wish this would have been ruffled lace. The other three eggs that I did actually had ruffled lace, but I ran out of that because um, these are kind of a larger project. Um, but once I had that on, um, I thought it looked really pretty and you can tell I'm getting like some glueys. They always stick to my fingers and listen, you guys, my craft table is a gluey hot mess. It's a pretty big mess in general. If you can see off to the side, apologies, but I am crafting it up and just going for it. Now I'm going to take some pretty pink satin ribbon, which Dollar Tree also has. And I'm just going to tie some shoelace pretty bows. So just tie a bow like you'd be tying a shoelace. And then I'm going to hot glue that to either side of my pretty egg. And here is how it turned out. And these would also make really pretty decor if you're decorating for like a little baby shower or an Easter party or something like that. I put two on either side of my mantle and then I have two more left over to do whatever I want with. So I might make a swag to go outside my door on either side of my outdoor lights. And I did mm -hmm. use waterproof Mod Podge so they could possibly be used outside. <laughs> they get might get a little damaged to the satin ribbon, but happy crafting. Let's take some trash and turn it into treasure. I'm going to create some super cute little um, paper carrots. So I'm taking this paper roll and then just some brown craft paper. And the paper roll was from um, wrapping paper roll. And then I'm simply going to cut it down to a little bit smaller size. I'm going to take the brown craft paper and wrap it around the paper roll to create kind of a carrot shape. And this wasn't perfect. It didn't look exactly like a carrot, but I think it was enough. You know, you just want to roll it into kind of a little burrito and then um, stuff the extra paper down into the end of the roll. You could also do toilet paper rolls or um, paper towel rolls. That would work too. And then I'm going to take and stuff the other excess down in to the other end, you know, and just kind of shape it around. These don't have to be perfect. They're supposed to be kind of rustic looking. <laughs> And then I'm going to take some orange paint. I had this on hand from last fall. It's just that apple barrel craft paint, I believe, from Walmart. And then I'm going to give it a little bit of a paint job to look make it look a little bit more carroty. I wish I would have had some baker's twine to kind of wrap around the carrot to kind of secure it a little bit more. It seemed kind of flimsy on here, um, but I did end up using a little bit of hot glue. I've been really impatient with my stuff drying um, recently but here is how it looks so far I also added in some cute little leaves and some moss to the top So here is how my jumbo cute little carrot turned out after I had added in some moss. I grabbed this little 
picnic basket. It was my daughter had picked it up from the thrift store. I popped some greenery in there, put some of the little Dollar Tree cute little carrot beads in there, and then pushed the carrots kind of down into the greenery like they were blooming out. So it's kind of like a little blooming floral basket. And I want to put this outside. Um, I have two chairs on my front porch, and I thought it'd be super cute to kind of just have this. I didn't want it to blow away, so I put. Um, two little two pound weights down in it. You could also put rocks down in it if you're you know, putting a basket out on your front porch. I put a little bunny by it. I think it needs one more little thing. They say you're supposed to do things in threes. Um, we do get a ton of wind on our hill. So that is why I put those weights down in there because I've lost flags. I've lost all kinds of decor off my front porch if it isn't anchored down. Now we're gonna create a super fun Easter wreath and bow. So I had this wreath left over from last summer. I had bought it like this with the flowers already on it from Michaels. I'm gonna take one of these Hobby Lobby bunnies and I'm gonna simply take a piece of wire and I twisted the wire around the bunny's ears to secure the bunny into the wreath. Um, you could also use a giant zip tie. I am completely out of zip ties after doing this wreath. The next thing I did was take some of this blue chanel Wasserie ribbon and I had this left over from last season. I'm also taking this blue and white striped ribbon. Now I ordered this ribbon on Amazon last season. It is wired and I wasn't for sure how I felt about combining the blue and white with the Easter colors but because these colors are brighter and the wreath did have blue flowers in it I feel like it worked um, and I think it's kind of a pop of color that's unexpected. Sometimes, and listen, I'm a pastel gal. I love everything, pastel, pinks, blues, greens. Sometimes I feel like my Easter decor can look almost too pastel, like it's a baby's room stuff. So I thought, let's just try breaking it up with a little bit of a bolder blue. Um, and so I took my easy bow maker, made a quick little bow. You guys could also make a loopy bow. Go back and watch some of my bow videos if you need help making bows. Um, and I am gonna make a separate bow video for the bow that I'm gonna probably use in my garden. But anyway, so take that bow, attach it into the wreath with a zip tie, some floral wire. I'm also gonna take this um, lighter blue chinoiserie ribbon and then this little Easter egg ribbon and pop that in. I wish I would have had some brighter color pinks and oranges ribbon, but if I, if you guys are new to my site, listen, I try to repurpose and reuse as much as I can. I'm not like a big go out and buy all new ribbon every single season. I take my projects apart. I repurpose and reuse everything. I don't sell my projects. I simply share free videos with you guys on how you can create um, fun decor. So. I have had people ask me about different, you know, do I sell things? No, I don't. I used to sell things on Etsy years ago, but now I've just gotten to where this is as much as I can kind of do make things for my home. I'm adding in some pretty Easter eggs to kind of bring in some of those blues. I did also off camera add in a couple of pieces of ribbons to the bow that were longer to create tails and then a couple more pieces of ribbon mixed in to kind of bring those blues in. Let me know what you guys think about this bolder blue. I know it's a little bit unexpected. I am gonna add in, I think some chinoiserie blue and white planters to my front porch to really bring everything together. And also side note, my front porch stuff is not done. I'm just slowly putting all of this together to my it's supposed to be 80 degrees so I'm really gonna go to work and hopefully film it for you guys but happy crafting okay let's make a big fabulous bow for this bow I'm gonna use my easy bow maker you guys can grab these at any craft store you can order them off of Amazon I love them because it makes you know making your bow just really easy it has little measurements on it so for this bow we're going to go eight inches across this is wired ribbon always use wired ribbon when you make these big fluffy bows i grabbed this it's blue and white striped ribbon off of amazon i know some people had commented and said it looked black no it's blue and white but black and white would be pretty as well i'm using this ribbon simply because i already have it on hand i try to repurpose and reuse as much of my supplies as i can i buy all of my own supplies and 
and I just feel like, you know, it's cost efficient and I'd like to be really creative and try to repurpose and reuse as much as I can. So I went about two inches smaller on each loop and I did three loops of the blue ribbon. Then I'm gonna add in this pretty rose ribbon. And if you guys love romantic decor, if you love that, you know, cottage country look, shabby chic, this rose ribbon from Hobby Lobby is where it's at. I love it, it's so pretty. Um, and so I'm just going to add that in to the blue. I know that seems a little bit strange, but I feel like it looks pretty. So it's my home. You guys can use whatever ribbon you love. And um, I'm going to use this because this is what I have on hand. Um, I'm going to dovetail those ends and just um, also go in with some of this pretty pink and white gingham ribbon. I got this at Michael's on clearance last season. You can tell I have all the strips of ribbon. This was from me taking apart all of my bows from last season and um, I'm just going to repurpose and reuse them. They're not going to look perfect but we're going to roll with it. Here's what it looks like so far. I'm going to use this in my front porch garland and I was unsure about the blue and white ribbon but the longer that I look at it the more I think it's just a pop of unexpected color. I'm going to add in some blue planters to my front porch that have that beautiful um, kind of chinoiserie print um, with my little topiaries that I spray painted pink and white. And so that's what I'm going to go with so far this season. I know that supposedly chinoiserie is trending with the blue and white. I did it a couple years ago, but I'm going to reintroduce it into some of my decor. It's also a great transition into summer. The blue and white is going to look beautiful with pops of yellow and hot pink and all that good kind of good stuff. So I zip tied this entire ribbon together, then I'm just going to fluff it out and I am going to add it into the garland on my front porch, but this garland is not done. I'm actually going to take it off and I think I'm going to swag it on the other side because I don't want it to interfere with my ring doorbell camera. You can see right there. I don't want it to be covered up. so. Um, I'm going to take it off and re-put it on the other side. Those are my little garden planners that I painted. And then here's going to be a fun little clip of Benji Bear coming up. So here is Benji Bear in the morning. He likes to sit on the back of the couch. And then I just cuddle a blanket all the way around him because he doesn't, he gets, seems like he's kind of cold in the morning. He's always really curled up and he's really cuddly. So we sit and do Bible study and then I make my computer post first thing in the morning. But I love to get him cuddled up and then I sit like right in front of him. Sometimes he'll cuddle up on my lap too. Um, but he's so stinking cute and it has been unseasonably warm where I'm at the last couple of days so uh, he has got to go on almost two walks a day and if you guys have a terrier you know how um, much energy they have and so here he is he has his Easter scarf on and he is ready to roll he got to go on two walks a day and he's still been super rowdy um, he even was rowdy like barking at cars today which he usually doesn't do that so I don't know what was going on with that but I definitely have been getting my exercise in with him and he wants to say hi to all his puppy dog and kitty cat fans and he really loves y'all. For this Dollar Tree DIY, I want to share with you guys how you can take some of these Dollar Tree wooden cutouts and I'm simply hot gluing them to some pretty paper. I'm going to be adding them to a garland. There are so many different ways you can do this. I also have Mod Podge these before, but I feel like hot gluing them is just a little bit of an easier way. And they come, I believe, 12 to a pack, so you get a lot of bang for your buck on these. They're also great if you're going to be doing... Um, an Easter tree or you just need some fun little Easter decor pieces and make great garlands and then again I am going to share with you guys how I'm going to pick them in to the garland above my front door so once I had all the eggs hot glued on to the little wooden piece I'm just going to simply trim them out and to hang them you guys can easily take some um, little pieces of wire string those through the top because they do have little hangers at the top but you guys could also take some clothespins and hot glue clothespins to the back which is what i'm going to do i also found this super cute little pink rickrack um, that i'm going to hot glue around them because i was kind of in a hurry when i was hot gluing them to um, the front of these eggs um, so i'm just going to add this in and around and that'll get make sure that the paper doesn't pull up. So I chose a blue and white, kind of like that chinoiserie print, which is really in this year. And if you can see the little bows that I may be using for my garland, there's also blue and white in those bows. 
I'm trying to add a little bit of the blue and white as an accent color to kind of um, brighten up the pastel look, which I love pastels, you guys. But for my front door, I wanted to have a little bit more of a statement. So I am adding in that pretty navy blue. And my forethought with this is also is once Easter is over, then I can start thinking about, you know, the summer lemon decor. It looks really great with blue and white and also 4th of July. So I'm always thinking about how I can repurpose and reuse my decorations. And now you can see that I'm just gonna hot glue some clothespins to the back, and that way I can easily clip them into my floral garland. So here is what they look like and here is where I'm going to clip them in to this beautiful floral garland. And in the next DIY, I'm gonna share with you guys how I create this floral garland. But look how easy it is just to pop them in to a pretty garland. And you can see I have a lot of different colors going on, but hopefully it works. Let me know what you guys think about this and happy crafting. For this next DIY, I'm gonna make a beautiful front door garland. So I'm gonna take three different garlands and I'm gonna zip tie them together. I'm starting out with this summer garland from Michaels. And then at the flea market, I found this really cute, it has this little pitberry garland. So I'm gonna mix that in with the floral garland. And then I'm gonna add in this kind of whimsical greenery garland piece that was super inexpensive at Hobby Lobby. I'm gonna take about four to five zip ties and simply zip tie the garland garlands together because I want it to look a little bit more full. It's going to be the big statement piece that's going to go outside my home. You guys know I love to do a big floral garland and then take family pictures underneath it. Um, we do that every year and I want to try to change it up because the last couple years I've done really pastel, like really light colored, which this is very pastel as well, but I feel like the hot pink is going to give it a little bit more dimension and the hot pink is gonna match in with um, the wreath that I already made for this. The next thing I wanna do is take some of these little Dollar Tree eggs, and you can see I have a measuring tape laying out in front of this. That is kind of measuring the part of the garland that's gonna be above the door. That's a little hack that you guys can use. And I'm gonna simply take these Dollar Tree eggs and zip tie them into the garland. I think these Dollar Tree eggs are so cute and they're looking perfect so far. So here is how it looks. Now I had made a bunch of coffee filter roses. So these are just roses made out of coffee filters and I've shared that video with you guys a couple times. So hopefully you were able to catch that. I'll try and repost it on my Facebook um, without being redundant, but I know not everybody gets to see things at certain times. So anyway, I'm using the pink and the blue coffee filter roses. Some of the coffee filter roses I have have um, uh, little clothespins on the back of and then some of them the purple ones I'm just hot gluing into the garland um, for time's sake um, but these coffee filter roses to do this mini took several hours I like to put on a show and make them and I really feel like they look real really realistic and because my garland on my front porch is covered hopefully they'll be okay the next thing I want to do is create a beautiful bow for my garland I'm using my easy bow maker because it just makes it so easy I'm using this blue and white ribbon that I found on Amazon. I love using wired ribbon, highly recommend. And then I'm gonna layer on top of that with some of this pretty rose ribbon from Hobby Lobby. I think this rose ribbon is so beautiful. It's very cottage style. And I liked it mixed together with the blue and white because it kind of just adds some dimension and some flair. <laughs> It might not be for everybody, but I feel like it makes it look a little bit more grown up. Whereas sometimes I feel like when I do too much of the pastels, it looks a little bit too much like a baby room. But don't get me wrong, you guys, I absolutely love all of my pastels. And so here I am, I'm just gonna, I went ahead and just hung my garland 
on several nails that I nailed onto the outside of my house. And here is the finished look. I painted these topiaries pink and also added some pretty bows to kind of mix in with that. And then in the next video, I'm gonna share with you guys how I kind of put everything together. Now let's create a super easy little spring floral. I have my pretty little blue chinoiserie um, vase, and then I'm gonna take some of these greenery pieces and simply just pop some greenery pieces in. I used everything to decorate my front porch with things that I already had on hand. I know the chinoiserie or the blue and white oriental is really in this year, and you guys can easily find it at Home Goods, TJ Maxx, um, Ross, or even you'll find some of these at your local thrift store, or you can even take a chinoiserie napkin and Mod Podge that onto some vases to make a faux chinoiserie, which I've shared with you guys how to do that. I'll try to pull out some of those videos for you guys and post those um, in some of my next video. But anyway, so I'm just adding in some greenery. I put some little floral foam down into this vase, and here is how it looks so far. It was such a beautiful day. I had to bring you guys outside for crafting. Now, originally when I did this, I went ahead and added in some of these little styrofoam eggs from the Dollar Tree, just to give it kind of a fun little Easter pop. I think once I had that done, but I looked at it from far off, I ended up changing it around, but I thought that this was a fun idea. So if you don't want to go all out for decorating for Easter, you guys can easily get some little Dollar Tree eggs on a steak, pop them into whatever floral planters you have on your front porch and call it good. Easter decorating doesn't have to be hard, but look how cute that is. Just adding that little spring pop of color. Now I'm going to decorate my front porch front door. I got this um, mat at Hobby Lobby. I believe it was $9.99. It was really inexpensive. And then I'm gonna add in my little pink topiaries. These are simply those green topiaries that I painted a ballet slipper pink. And then I'm adding in just to fill them out because these planters are a little bit oversized, but they're really great because the topiaries have a tendency to fall over in the wind. So I just added some greenery in and around that and these cute little bunnies. I can't remember where I got those. I think I got those a Tuesday morning before they went out of business. And then the chinoiserie planter and the vase. I thought that looked pretty because it mixes in with the blue and white that I used in the ribbons. So I really like to fill out my front porch. I know this might not be for everybody, but I am more of a maximalist decorator. I like to see all my treasures. <laughs> And so anyway, I think it's coming out rather nice. Let me know what you guys think. I did end up adding some bows also to uh, the little planters. So here is the finished look. Let me know what you all think. Did I pull it together? What do you guys think about the bold blue and white? I think it's definitely something different for Easter, but I feel like it just adds kind of a really crisp look. I do know that blue and white is going to be really a thing this year. And then my this buddy. Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take one of the Dollar Tree planters from the Dollar 25 section and I hot glued some foam into the bottom and then added some stones to really hold it down. I get a lot of wind on my hill. I'm going to set this outside by my front porch. I'm simply adding in some florals. Now I grabbed this bundle of florals from Hobby Lobby. Their floral section is 40% off and I thought this bundle was really pretty. So I'm just cutting um, parts of the flowers off, adding in some greenery. And then once I have that done, I'm going to take and stuff in and around my little planter base. Now we'll see how long this lasts outside. You notice I am adding hot glue to the base of my floral stems. I'm hoping that will keep my arrangement together. I felt like this Dollar Tree planter was really pretty and I didn't end up even changing the color of it because it's just a nice um, clean kind of um, you know 
off-white color. So anyway, I'm going to take some of this brown paper and just stuff it in and around. And then I'm going to take some of the Dollar Tree foam moss and I'm going to hot glue on top of the brown paper stuffing and then squish the moss down in there so you can't see where I stuffed it. You could add in more greenery, but I was really trying to kind of ration it because I wanted to make two of these. So you guys are going to see me make two of these little pretty planters and I'm going to play some music and let you guys watch me work. And here is how these super adorable little Dollar Tree planters turned out. I think they look super adorable for spring. And remember, you guys can always change out whatever flowers you have on hand that you love to decorate your home with. And happy crafting! For this Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to share with you guys how to make these super adorable little bunny candles. So I'm taking some of this white ribbon I had left over actually from winter and I'm just going to hot glue in and around the candle. And then I love these super adorable little bunny butts from a Dollar Tree. They come, I believe, in a six pack and I'm simply going to hot glue that onto the ribbon. You guys could really use any ribbon to do this, but I just thought this looked super cute. It makes it look like the little bunny has like hopped into the candle kind of. I also found these um, little Dollar Tree candlesticks. I'm going to take some Dollar Tree raffia and just wrap it around the base of the candlestick and then tie that off. These are so easy to do. And I'm just using these flickering flameless candles that I found off of Amazon. Dollar Tree also sometimes carries some flickering flameless candles as well. So check their candle section. And um, I'm also deciding to go ahead and add in some of this cute little gingham ribbon. I was going to simply tie a super easy little shoelace bow and then hot glue that in to the base of the candle and again these candles you guys can get on amazon you can find some similar at dollar tree hobby lobby also has them um, i do love them because they come with a remote timer and they're flameless so they're super safe around pets or kids or grandkids or whatnot so they have been kind of a staple in my home um, so anyway I'm just going to take my ribbon and dovetail my ends I always like to try to use wired ribbon and this little gingham ribbon is from Michaels I also think Dollar Tree may have some pretty pink satin ribbon I haven't seen pink gingham ribbon at Dollar Tree yet but sometimes I do see gingham ribbon in their um, baby section like they have a baby wedding section at my store so check those sections for some different um, Easter ribbon but this was just a fun idea that I had I hope you guys are enjoying it and always remember you can change up whatever decorative accents that I'm using to match your home decor so you could change up the bows to blue or purple or green or you don't even have to add the bows if you like a little bit more of a simple clean look I'm kind of a maximalist gal and a crafty gal so anyway I hope you guys are enjoying it and are super inspired
For this DIY, we're gonna make some super adorable bunny plates, and this is gonna be kind of a thrift flip. So I found this gorgeous bunny paper at Hobby Lobby, and it was 60 cents, and then half of, or 40% off of that, because they had a 40% off their scrapbooking and paper craft stuff. So what I'm gonna do with this bunny paper is I just took and cut out a really super cute bunny, and then I'm gonna simply take some Mod Podge and Mod Podge it onto this pretty little antique plate that I found at the thrift store. So this little plate, um, they were actually $8 for this set. I think there were like six of them and they had a chipped bowl that came with it. Look how pretty that is. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Anyway, I just knew it would be perfect for crafting. And I knew this little bunny was going to fit perfectly into the center of this plate. I have an idea for this. I actually want to use them in a wreath, but I need to find the right supplies to add hangers to the back so I could put them into a wreath. Um, or I just might use them in like a tablescape or in a cabinet or whatnot. But this is such a fun idea. So you guys can easily use, you know, just a white plate from Dollar Tree, the thrift store, um, or you can find a pretty china plate. Um, with the Mod Podge, I'm I'm just using like a matte Mod Podge and because it's water-based I think it can probably just wash off too um, if I wanted to take it off um, let me know if you guys have ever done that um, I think if you soaked it in some hot soapy water it'd probably wash right off but anyway I just thought this was super fun and I'm gonna let you guys watch me craft and play some pretty music Full stop. can't believe I live in your thoughts about you all the time, morning, evening, and midnight. Such a wonderful delight. Forgo, give up everything that I own. Yeah, I'd give it all up now just to be with you somehow. Unexpected love was found. rose in a garden and it shows if I'm honest you're the leaves in mid-August and I've come out here to say And here is the final product. I think it looks super adorable and I hope you guys are inspired to create a fun little bunny plate or you just enjoy watching me craft. For this DIY, I'm going to create a cute little bird's nest. So I took this sweet little container that I had from the thrift store. It's kind of like a footed bowl or, you know, some type of little cup. Anyway, I'm going to hot glue in and around the edge of my container and then add some raffia around it as well. Be careful when you're doing this because the raffia, you know, you can burn your fingertips. I actually have neuropathy in my fingers, which as a crafter can kind of be a double-edged sword. I can't feel my fingertips when I'm using it. Um, so I have really tough little fingertips. Um, anyway, that's for another story. But I'm simply going to take and pinch the raffia in and around my little bowl. And I've made these little bird's nests with so many different types of containers. You guys can use, you know, a leftover sour cream container. You just cover it with a little bit of burlap and then simply make a bird's nest that way. I think these are really cute to add into spring decor and you guys can really make these as large or as small as you want. The next thing I'm gonna do is take some Dollar Tree floral moss and I'm gonna add a big giant dollop of hot glue in the center of that and then add in my floral moss and my cute bird's nest eggs. Now, one thing I am missing is a bird. So the next time I'm out and about, either in the thrift store or Dollar Tree, I'm going to look for a cute little bird. I always used to have birds on hand, but for some reason I couldn't find any for this project. But I am going to add a bird to my little bird's nest. For now though, Mama Bird is going to be out looking for some worms and we're just going to add little birdie eggs to the nest. The world around could pass us by a thunderstorm, a lightning strike as we hold each other. Rose in a garden, and it shows if I'm honest. You're the leaves in mid August, and I've come out here to say that I love you. Ooh, ooh, you, ooh. 
And here is how my super little fun bird's nest turned out mixed in with little bunny plates and the little bunny candles and the spring floral. We have one more craft I'm going to share in this video. Thank you guys so, so much for being here. It really means so much. And thank you for watching the whole video. Thank you for commenting down below. Okay, for this DIY, I'm going to share with you guys how I created these pink topiary um, pieces. I've had so many people ask, you're simply going to take some green topiaries. I found mine at Hobby Lobby and honestly, I've used these for several years, so they've kind of seen better days. I used some pink spray paint from Walmart and just simply spray painted them several coats of spray paint and I suggest two cans per topiary at least. The next thing I'm going to do is repaint these little garden planters. Now I also found these at Walmart a couple of years ago and I painted them a hot pink for Valentine's Day and now I kind of want to tone things down a little bit for Easter spring and so I'm using this celery chalk paint that I found at Walmart. Now once I had them done and painted, I wasn't really for sure how I felt about the celery color. So I need you guys to let me know if you like them or if I should have left them hot pink or if I should paint them white or pale pink. I'm just not for sure. I guess maybe because I don't usually use this color a lot, but I have heard that this year is the year for green and green is like a hot color so I thought well since green is a hot color I'm gonna go for it and I use two coats of the celery paint and you guys know I'm a gal who loves a little bit of change and I feel like the quickest way to change decor piece is simply to paint it up so I'm giving it a whirl and I'm going to pop my little pink planters down in the topiary and I'm gonna set them outside my house. Now yesterday <laughs> where I live, it was 80 degrees and today it's like 45 degrees. It's super cold out. So I didn't do a whole lot of extra stuff outside my house. So I'm just showing you guys how these look inside my house, but I'm gonna work on my front porch some more for the next video that you guys see. I'm hoping to do my front porch garland because it's supposed to be a lot nicer weather. And boy, that 80 degrees just got me spoiled. So now it feels super cold. I did get Benji Bear out and walk him today though. Spring um, floral. Grab two Dollar Tree pool noodles, poke a hole in one end with a steak knife or a sharp object, be safe with that. And then I'm gonna take this extension rod. You can really use any shower curtain rod. And I simply remove the top and then I put the extension rod in it to the pool noodle. And that is gonna create our nice little base. And then I'm going to poke that in to the pool noodle that we poked the hole in. And then I'm going to simply screw that little curtain rod piece back on and these were extension rods that I found at the thrift store and then I'm going to add some greenery again I found a huge box of greenery today I hit the jackpot it was ten dollars for the entire box I really didn't know what I was getting except for a ton of greenery and I was hoping for the best so I got a couple of garlands and I'm just going to add the garland on with um, this uh, zip tie. Now you guys could also use floral wire. That would be a great idea too, which I ended up having to do because the zip tie didn't really want to fit all the way around. I'm kind of out of my longer zip ties. Anyway, I need to make a trip to um, the Harbor Freight is where I get all my zip ties. But so I'm going to take this garland. I'm just going to wrap it around the pool noodle and I want to put um, the curtain rod or extension rod on the top part of my mantle that's going to give it some weight and then the longer pool noodle I'm just going to let it kind of drape down because I'm going to do just like kind of um uh, swag on my mantle. Now, don't panic if you guys don't have a mantle to do this on. You can totally do this on an entryway table. You could do this over your um, front door. You could do this over a mirror. So many different ideas. And you just simply, you know, don't have to add this many noodles. So I use two with this. You could just use one. You could even with an extension rod, put it like in your hallway or, you know, above your shower curtain or so many fun ideas. I think I'm going to use this multiple times throughout this next season. So get ready. So I did add another garland to this um, pool noodle. And then I'm just putting it on my mantle to kind of see what I'm working with here. And again, there were just random pieces of garland in this thrift store box. So I'm kind of trying to use the darker garlands, pieces that I'm finding, and I'm just adding them on with zip ties and floral wire. And um, 
you know, you guys can really get creative with this. You could even select a green pool noodle, might not be a bad idea. That way it would mix in with the greenery more. Um, but because I do have a white mantle, I thought this would work fairly well. And I also just already had that white pool noodle on hand. So I made the garland really nice and full. And then I overlaid the lighter colored garland that's kind of more like a lamb's ear type of garland. It's not lamb's ear, oof, it's that different greenery. But anyway, um, it's, it's all working. I got it nice and full with all the greenery. Now I made a bunch of coffee filter roses and I did these over the last couple of days. I'm gonna add these to the garland. I did wanna make kind of a plume up to the top of the garland and I found these mixed in with this box of greenery. So one of them was just like um, more of an ivy piece and then the other one was more of a greenery piece. I kind of meshed those in together and then with a zip tie, I'm going to zip tie those together. I'm gonna give kind of like a swag and the height at the corner of my garland. So you guys are gonna have to let me know. Yes, there's a bunch of different types of greenery mixed in, but if you guys have ever looked at pictures of like an English garden, you know, with all the ivy and greenery, I really think that this is what it might look like in nature with different leaves and florals and whatnot. So more thrift store flowers um, but hey listen you guys there's a ton of spring flowers out at dollar tree hobby lobby michaels um, these i believe are might be little geraniums so i'm going to add them in first and again i just have a random mix of flowers and you guys if you have been following me for a while have seen me use tons of flowers in my decor so i pull all of my centerpieces and wreaths and garlands apart at the end of every season and i reuse those florals because it's just me and and um, I buy all my own supplies to do all my decorating and crafting that I share with you guys. And so it's definitely more budget friendly to repurpose and reuse uh, my florals. So anyway, I'm adding in those geraniums and then I'm just gonna simply add in some more roses. Um, Another thing I wanted to tell you guys is start with your greenery base first, and then I think it's a good idea to add in your white florals next. I surely wish I would have had some peonies or hydrangeas, but that's okay. I'm gonna work with what I've got, and then I'm gonna add in some pretty pink roses, and at the end, I'm gonna add in my coffee filter roses. And at the end of this tutorial, I'm gonna add my coffee filter roses video one more time to this video because I know I'll have people that are watching this video that haven't seen that tutorial and they're gonna ask how I did the coffee filter roses and I don't wanna leave you guys out if you need to see that tutorial. For this particular garland, I'm using the coffee filter roses that I dyed a pale pink and to make my coffee filter roses, I just sit down with a pile of coffee filters at the end of my day or on the weekends and I just make them while I'm watching a show. So um, the amount of coffee filter roses that I've made in the last week, I've probably spent 10 hours in total making them. Um, they're a little bit time consuming, but not. I don't know if that makes sense. Anyway, I've gotten better as I've gone along. But anyway, you can see how this is really coming into effect and being really beautiful and blooming. I'm going to play some pretty piano music so you guys can watch me work um, and enjoy kind of the process. But I'm just going to now start to add in some of those pink roses. So I hope you guys are enjoying this and are feeling inspired. Oh, stop. Can't believe I live in your thoughts I think about you all the time Morning, evening, and midnight Such a wonderful delight Forgo Give up everything that I own Yeah, I'd give it all up now Just to be with you somehow Unexpected love was found You're the rose in a garden And it shows if I'm honest You're the leaves in mid-August And I've come out here to say Storm 
a lightning strike as we hold each other tight. You're the rose in a garden, and it shows if I'm honest. So, in today's video, I have a special little um sweet kitty cat friend my kitty cat tinky bear so usually you guys see benji bear in my videos tinky is she's just kind of she's an older cat and she just kind of does her own thing but today she was inside and because i was sitting down on the ground i think she wanted to um, get a cuddle with my feet so you're gonna see her um pop in and out kind of like trying to um you know get a little cuddle on my feet but tinky bear is super sweet she's a kind of a really a strange cat she's indoor outdoor um and her and benji bear have a little bit of a contentious relationship <laughs> so there's that and i've come out here to say So here is what it looks like in this stage of its creation. I am probably going to add a little bit more roses to make it a little bit fuller, but this is as far as I was really able to get today. The pretty, really kind of pale candy pink roses, those are the coffee filter roses. And so many of you guys have commented and said they look really real, and I really feel like they really do. They do not look like coffee filters to me. They really do look like a really pretty pretty um, pink rose so I'm really pleased with how those have come out and again I'm gonna leave the coffee filter rose tutorial at the end of this video I really this year I hope you guys are along for the ride with I'm gonna be doing a little bit more of repurposing and reusing household items to create decor rather than go out and buying a ton of new fancy decor um, I just feel like I guess I don't want to have a whole lot tons more to store i do love my all of my decor i love more is more i love going full and over the top as always and you guys are going to see that usually with me but i am going to be taking you know and doing i guess more let me share with you all how to create a bow garland so bows are all the rage right now i'm going to take this ribbon that i found on clearance after the holidays it's wired satin ribbon and i'm going to simply cut it and then tie it into a bow like i would be tying my shoelaces this is a super easy easy bow so you just tie it and then you're gonna to want to kind of play with those loops fluff them out you know ruche them around up and down then I want to take and dovetail the ends so just cut a little upwards triangle in either end and here is how your bow should look we're gonna make about five to six of these bows I think they're really pretty to make for um, bridal for home decor for Valentine's Easter any uh, baby oh my gosh this would be so pretty in a little baby girl's room so anyway make as many bows as you like for the um, space that you're decorating for they would be pretty hanging off of um, a mantle or um, a, like a little cabinet would be super adorable as well so once you have all of your bows made 
heat up that hot glue gun and then we're going to add just a little tiny touch of hot glue to the outer corner of our satin bow. This is super easy and then you're just going to take the other satin bow, pinch it together and allow it to dry. I did not add a ton of hot glue, just kind of a little dab. And then I'm going to continue that process as I create my bow garland. And here is the final result. You could easily run another piece of ribbon through either end of the little loop bows or even tie some string on it to each end and that way you could hang it. Another idea is to take some little thumbtacks and just thumbtack on the inside of the bow wherever you see fit. So I'm gonna finish getting all of my kind of pretty romantic Valentine's Day decor in order. You might see that this space has a lot of Valentine's Day decor, but I am gonna take some of it and spread it throughout my home as I get ready to share with you all a Valentine's Day home tour. So I hope you all are loving this tutorial and happy crafting. Let me share with you a cute and easy Dollar Tree cottage wreath. So I had made previously in the last video some beautiful cottage roses using coffee filters and I'll leave that video um, tutorial at the end of this video. So if you didn't get to see that, you can kind of catch up on it. But we're going to take our coffee filter roses and Dollar Tree carries these little kind of hoop wreath forms and we're just going to simply hot glue the little um, filters on to the wreath forms. Now I was worried that they didn't want to stabilize on there but I kind of figured out a way to get them securely on there um, once I got a couple more of them on there. So I'm using white and then pink and then pink and then white and you guys can really dye these coffee filter roses in any um, color that you love. This is such an inexpensive DIY and it comes out so beautiful. So you just need a little bit for the a three pack of hoops or $1.25 at the Dollar Tree and then your pack of coffee filters. You guys can get enough to do a bunch of roses for $1.25. And then I'm taking some pieces of coffee filter. I'm cutting them into little strips and hot gluing those to the back of my wreath. Um, that way it kind of holds those um, little roses on there just a little bit more securely. I also think felt would be nice uh, um, to glue to the back of that as well. You can also kind of hot glue your roses together just a little bit and that will keep them on there very nicely. And you can add in some greenery. I just add some greenery left over from another project. So I'm clipping that in and just kind of hot gluing in and around the pretty base of my romantic roses wreath. Um, and again, you guys can dye these coffee filters with some inexpensive paint that you find at the Dollar Tree. That's what I did. I actually used red paint, um, but it came out and it ended up being more of like a coral so it's a little bit lighter um, but I feel like this is just such a beautiful project especially if you're on a tight budget and uh, my goal is is to make a whole bunch of these coffee filter roses and do like a big beautiful mantle garland here is how it turned out and it looks and you guys could tie a little bow to the top and you have a fabulous wreath on a total budget
to create a beautiful romantic vase using this piece of lace and a Dollar Tree vase. So I'm going to take the base of the vase and I'm just going to add the lace. I'm using a little bit of hot glue. I've also done this to where you could Mod Podge the lace to the vase as well, but this is going to be super easy and quick. So just grab some scrap lace. I find mine at the thrift store all the time, or even a shirt that has been damaged beyond repair. And then I'll just cut some of the lace parts off. So again, I'm just taking some of this hot glue and gently hot gluing in and around the base of my little Dollar Tree vase. And the best part about this is when you're hot gluing, if you decide you don't want a lace vase and you want to do something else with the vase, you can simply just pull it off give it a little wipe down and you're good to go. I am going to hot glue a little strip here at the back to kind of hold everything together. Be careful when you're working with lace and hot glue because it is easy to burn yourself. I have neuropathy in my hands so I don't feel a lot of my fingertips but there, that's a whole other story. So I'm going to take my little scissors here. My daughter got these for me for Christmas from Five Below. I love how fancy they are and I also love how sharp they are and I am just trying I mean off a little bit of the excess lace because I want to do something with the excess lace in another um, tutorial. So anyway, just continue to hot glue that big strip of lace um, and then you're going to have a beautiful lace vase. How easy is that? You could pop the excess lace in there as so, but again, I do want to save some of that excess lace for a different part of a tutorial. So I am going to quickly just kind of trim this top part off and then you could easily tuck that into the vase. I did want it to kind of stick in there a little bit better, especially since I'm going to add some flowers. So I'm just adding a couple little dabs of hot glue in and around the underneath part of the lace and here is our beautiful lace face now here are some faux flowers from Hobby Lobby check their sale catalogs they usually put them 40 to 50 percent off and I'm simply going to add them into my lace base <laughs> I feel like this is a tongue twister or rhyming time or something anyway they, I just have them all trimmed kind of at different um, levels. That way they kind of sit a little bit differently in the vase, but clustering them all together. And these are the really realistic roses from Hobby Lobby. They're a little bit more pricey, but I think they're well worth it. And then you just kind of want to kind of arrange things around. You could add some greenery if you wanted, but this is just a quick little tutorial. Fun and fabulous, very romantic and very budget friendly. For this Dollar Tree DIY, let's create a pretty little mini Victorian cottage style wreath. So from the Dollar Tree, I found these little round wreath forms and they come in a three pack. And I had this really pretty lace ribbon left over from the thrift store um, Christmas decorating and I just decided to hot glue it in and around the base of my wreath form and then trimmed off the edges. Now this would have worked so much easier had I had just a large piece of lace to lay over the wreath form but I didn't so I'm just going to do it in strips using the pretty lace ribbon and the ribbon is so pretty I thought you know what this is a great way to actually show off the ribbon. So I just hot glued it in and around the edge of the base and then just a tiny bit on each piece of ribbon. And here's how my pretty lace wreath form base looks. Then I'm going to take these little cottage roses and I'm going to tie a shoelace bow with this satin ribbon. Super easy. You just tie a bow like you would tie 
your shoelaces and then I'm gonna put that in and around the pretty roses I really don't want to overload this wreath decor idea because I want it to remain somewhat simple I want to be able to use it in like a little small bathroom area or just a little pretty small space another thing would be to grab some junk jewelry maybe you know your grandma or your aunt's pretty brooch that um, you'd like to use in memory that you could pin onto this or you could even just use like an old earring maybe that's broken um, to go in and around some of the flowers or like I'm gonna do I'm gonna put a pretty Victorian totally dazzled jewel into the center of my bow so I kind of arranged the smaller roses and I'm adding in some little Dollar Tree greenery in and around the base of my pretty wreath form. You can take like a little piece of floor wire and just hook that through the lace at the top or you could tie a bow to be able to hang it or you could just kind of set it around with some pretty books. Some fairy lights behind it would also be really pretty. So I added that pretty little um, Victorian lady piece. It's just like a little jeweled piece. I think you could put it on a necklace. Um, and those come from totallydazzled.com. My sweet friend Natalie is so amazing. She's a small business owner. I'll leave a link in the description box for you guys. But here is how it turned out. It's just a pretty simple little wreath. I think it'd be great also for a little Mother's Day gift idea. Um, or just anybody that has a romantic notion or if you have that little romantic space in your home. Fun and fabulous on a budget. And then I have to share with you guys my little puppy dog, Benji Bear. He loves to get cuddled up. So I'll just take like a little blanket and wrap it around him. He loves getting the super cuddle, the super snuggle. Look at, he's not spoiled at all. Then this is him also wanting to play. He absolutely loves to play. He wants to say hi to all his kitty cat and puppy dog fans out there. We love y'all. And the next quick segment of this video, I'm gonna pop in the tutorial for making and dyeing the coffee filter roses. I feel like that might be important in case you didn't watch my last video and you wanted to make that wreath that I shared earlier in this video. So happy crafting, love y'all. Let's make some beautiful hand dyed coffee filter roses. So I took two cups of water, a container, and a big dollop of paint. I found this paint at the Dollar Tree. It is gonna come out a little bit um, more of a pale reddish pink when we're done. But I took about seven to eight coffee filters and you wanna dip them in the paint, swish them around, and then kind of squeeze them out. You are gonna to wanna to wear gloves for this project. And I went ahead and just lined um, my baking sheet with foil it says to light it with parchment paper, but um, whatever you have on hand. And I'm also just adding them stacked together on to the baking sheet. Now, if you do them separately, you don't have to bake them for very long, only seven minutes, but because I did the seven to eight bundles on top of each other, I baked them at 250 de degrees for 30 minutes. Then you're gonna simply take and cut around the edge. You wanna start cutting in a circular direction and you wanna cut a little bit smaller and get a wider cut as you go along. You don't wanna cut to the very end. You want to leave a small round circle at the very end and when we put the flowers together, I'll show you how. Now this is the easiest tutorial I have ever done for these coffee filter roses. So you're gonna take a tiny bit of hot glue and just begin to roll the smallest in. Um, just roll it like you're rolling up a little burrito. You kinda of wanna keep the um, one end flat and then the other end that's gonna be the rose part can be a little bit uh, different. 
it's okay if it's a little bit uneven and it looks more like a natural rose, I guess. I did hot glue it a little bit as I went along, but you really can simply roll um, a couple of rolls and then hot glue and then roll a couple of rolls and hot glue some more. I did several of these and I can't wait to do more of them in different colors. Um, it was a little bit of a process to bake them, but it was still super fun and I really enjoyed this project. Once you get to the end, you're going to flip your rows over and there's the flat part that you the circle that you didn't cut and you're going to want to take hot glue a generous amount on the bottom and just take that flat part and fold that over and then you want to keep hot gluing and folding to get um, a little bit more kind of a petal shape and this is really there's not a whole lot of rhyme, rhyme or reason for how mm. I did the last one um, of the petals I just kind of saw where they needed to be hot glued and kind of hot glued them in and around my pretty <laughs> rose so I made several of these in the um, red color that we dyed and then several in the white and I'll share with you guys how to do the white um, at the end of this tutorial similar except for you don't dye them of course um, here is how it turned out I really feel like it turned out fabulous I had this little extra piece of greenery left over from some roses that I had ordered on Amazon so I just took some hot glue and hot glued some greenery on to the back of my pretty roses and here is how they look I didn't put greenery on all of them because I have a project in mind for how I want to use these but I need to get a whole bunch more done so I'm going to work on doing some more of them tomorrow tomorrow but fun and fabulous and these are so so for this fun. next Dollar Tree DIY I want to show you guys how to make a super a little adorable easy Dollar Tree centerpiece so I've got this Dollar Tree charger and then two pieces of styrofoam I'm going to take this cute little a Dollar Tree sign it says happy Easter yes I'm a little bit late to the Easter party but you guys can use any sign so I mashed it in there to create the little ridges and grooves that you're going to need and I'm adding in some hot glue and then from the haul that I shared with you guys I found these super cute little bunny legs at Dollar Tree. How cute is this? So anyway, and just so you guys know, I am crafting with my boot. <laughs> I broke my ankle a couple months ago and but I'm back up on my feet. So I'm trying to get some craft videos out for you guys. So bear with me as I get back into the saddle of things. Now I'm going to make a loopy bow with this Dollar Tree Deco mesh. You just take the mesh, loop it over on itself, and you're going to tie it off at the center. Um, with a little zip tie here and I forgot how I when I craft for you guys I craft upside down and backwards basically because the camera is facing me so you guys are seeing this where I can't really see the front part of it but I am going for it anyway anyway so you're gonna make these deco mesh fluffy bows and I thought that would be kind of cute to fill it out because it's also inexpensive I need to go back to Dollar Tree and get some more florals um, for some of my projects but hey one step at a time my daughter did help me on Saturday go into the store find some goodies that I felt like I could craft with and share some new videos with you guys and help me load everything up and it's just you know getting back on my feet. So I added in some of this blue deco mesh. Again, same thing where you just take the deco mesh, you loop it over on itself, and then you're gonna add it on top of the pink. Use any color that you love, and you guys don't have to necessarily do Easter if you've already moved on to a different holiday. You could also craft these for fall and Christmas. I'm gonna use the rest of the deco mesh to do the back of this, and again, just create a big loopy bow. You just take the mesh, loop it over on itself. It's a messy bow, it's kind of sloppy, but it's really easy, and if you're not in the best of health conditions, this might be something that you wanna try and can do, and boom, there you guys go. And I'm gonna take and make some little loopy ribbons here again you just take that ribbon loop it over on itself and then pop it down into your project super easy peasy um not fancy at all and that's all i did for this project you guys um you know usually i probably would have done a lot more and added in eggs and all kinds of stuff but i am trying to take this one step at a time literally <laughs> And today, actually, I took my boot off for a lot of the day because I was at home and resting after I did these projects. And I've been able to have my um, 
ankle and a tennis shoe and not the boots on so don't tell my worth though <laughs> anyway i hope you guys are loving it and are inspired to next create. dollar tree i want to show you guys how to make a super adorable little easy dollar tree wreath so dollar tree has these mini wreaths and they come two to a pack what i want to do is cover it um, with some of this dollar tree ribbon that i found in the dollar tree plus section so i just hot glued it and then i'm taking it and wrapping it around the little mini wreath super easy you don't have to necessarily do this but it is going to save on the amount of florals that you have to add onto the wreath i thought this would be a fun idea if you're decorating for a small space or maybe even for a bridal idea the next thing we're going to do is make a super easy adorable little bow you just take the ribbon and loop it over on itself four times and that's going to create your loops and then tie it off in the center and the more times you loop it over on itself the more times it's going to Ha or the more loopy bows it's going to have. Okay, so I'm going to add it to the top of this wreath and then just take another piece of ribbon and tie it off and that will give you double duty where it's tied onto your wreath and there's also tails. You could add a dab of hot glue if you're not able to securely tie it. Um, the next thing I want to do is add that little dabble of hot glue and then kind of ruche up that um, little tail there don't forget to dovetail your ends on your ribbon so you cut a triangle in an upwards direction i always teach you guys to do that because i think it's something um, when i made wreaths for my etsy clients it was just something i made sure to do to give it a polished look you can do this in your home for your own personal wreaths or gifts as well so now i'm going to add in some pretty little roses these are just bundles of roses i got off amazon left over from a wedding that i decorated for last year so i've been able to get a lot of use out of them and show you guys a lot of ideas now remember whenever i'm using different things you guys can add your own spin on this i added this cute little gather sign to the center part of my wreath and i just thought that looked so pretty i think you guys could use this really in any sweet spot and i love kind of the juxtaposition of the roses with the get the woodiness of the gather sign i just thought it looked kind of cute a little bit of rustic and a little bit of romance so anyway i think this is a fun idea on a budget and i hope you guys are getting inspired what are you doing this summer what is your favorite summer drink do you guys love lemonade tea a nice iced coffee a cocktail beverage what do you guys love to drink that is going to be the secret question for this video. So I love to pop in a secret question for my videos and give you guys an opportunity to win a $100 Hobby Lobby gift card giveaway. The details are going to be in the description box of this video for you guys. But basically the winner is going to be um, announced on May 15th on my social media accounts. And just answer that secret question. What's your favorite summertime drink? I love y'all and I hope you're inspired. For this first Dollar Tree DIY, I want to share with you guys how to make a super adorable little elevated planter. Now, I'm using these little crates, and the crates actually came from Target Dollar Spot. They were $5 for the pack, and then I'm just using these little pieces of wood block that were extra wood pieces cut from my patio from last season. I'm taking my hot glue gun. You guys could also use wood glue, but the hot glue is pretty quick and it holds pretty well. And I'm just going to hot glue little legs on these elevated planters. Now, I think these elevated planters are so fun and they're so much more expensive if you buy them at your home decor stores. So grab some crates and some little wood blocks and get to work. Okay, now I'm just going to use a paintbrush and I'm going to chalk paint some white chalk paint on these. Um, my idea for this season of decor is going to be to start moving into some really fresh, clean kind of French country feel with a lot of my decor. But remember, you you all can change this up to match your decor. You can stain it, you can paint it black, whatever colors you love. Now I'm taking this well-loved and well-used piece of Dollar Tree styrofoam and I'm just going to pop that into the base of the planter and then using some of these Dollar Tree little greenery plants. I'm just gonna mix in some greenery and some fun lilac and lavender. Again, kind of giving it that fresh spring garden feel. And just remember, you guys can use whatever florals you have. These are just kind of some florals that I had on hand in my craft stash. Always check your craft stash first. If you guys are like me, you always think, gosh, I have nothing to craft with. And trust me, if you're a crafter, you have stuff to craft with. I know I do. Um, and so if I dig around first before I go, go out and buy a bunch of stuff, I can really repurpose and reuse things from last season, which is what you guys are probably going to notice if you've been around here for a while um, that I do. I do a lot of repurposing and reusing. I feel like you can really have a boutique gorgeous on home on a budget. Now I wanted this to kind of look like, you know, those really expensive um, 
planters that you see with like a bunch of greenery and then pretty colorful plants that you see at the garden store. I kind of wanted to give it that vibe. And then I'm just using some Dollar Tree moss to kind of tuck in and around the base so you don't see that icky styrofoam. We don't want to see that. Um, and so then, boom, we have a couple of fun little planters. Now, Dollar Tree is going to carry these similar style crates. They're just a little bit smaller, um, but you could also use Jenga blocks for your legs on this. And I think I shared with you guys a DIY similar to this last year, but this is on a little bit of a bigger scale. So here is how it looks popped in to my new living room mirror and this cute little honey bunny. This bunny came from Tuesday morning and she is so adorable. She actually lights up. I need to pop off her little bottom and put some batteries in there so she'll light up and feel cozy and glowy at night. I'm just starting to really bring in some of my Easter decor into my living room. You guys comment down below and let me know if you have started sneaking Easter decor into your living room as well. I'm kind of done with Valentine's Day. That's been all put up and I am ready for some spring dreaming. This is day three of the snow that we had. We actually were able to get out today though, thankfully. So I hope you guys are staying cozy and warm no matter where you're at. And I hope you're inspired to create some fun spring decor. For this next Dollar Tree DIY, I want to share with you guys how to make a super easy little beautiful decor piece. This is going to be a wall hanging that I'm creating for my sweet, sweet friend. And I'm taking one of these Dollar Tree wooden heart signs and then this calendar that I found. I want to say that I found this calendar at Hobby Lobby. It's a scripture calendar and it said the Lord will guide you always. She is a sweet friend of faith and I can't wait to give this to her and surprise her with it. I also found some pretty little prayer cards. Um, she's just one of my sweet, sweet friends. And so I thought this would be super nice um, to share with her. So I'm cutting out the um, calendar uh, page and it was a thick calendar so I didn't mod podge it. I was able to just hot glue it to the little wooden heart base and then I'm going to create a super easy bow. So this is the same bow that I used on that wreath garland um, at the first of this video. So you just take ribbon and you hot glue it in to end and then you're going to pinch it up in the center and pinch it together. And that's when you want to take some floral wire or a pipe cleaner or um, a zip tie and just, you know, zip tie that to the center. And then you can place it onto the top part of your little um, decor idea. And then I'm adding them some pretty roses. I just thought it would be so sweet and just soft and beautiful, something that maybe she can use for her room or maybe a bathroom area or just something like that. So anyway, I love creating fun things for friends and I don't know if you guys enjoy that as well, but I just thought this would be super pretty. And I was looking at it and I thought, you know what, we need, a, we need to add a little bit more. We didn't have quite enough. I wanted some tails, so I added some tails to the top part of the little decor piece. I ruched the ribbon, that way it didn't cover up the pretty scripture and then I added in these pretty little Dollar Tree beads. Hopefully this doesn't give it too much weight when if she decides to hang it. Um, and then I'm going to add in another little hanger that was originally on here. So anyway, here is how it turned out. I think it looks really pretty and I hope that this blesses you even just reading this. I don't know where you're at and what you've got going on, but the Lord will guide you always. I say that because I'll tell you what, I know the Lord guides me and there's so many times, and that's a scripture in Isaiah 38, 11, I think, maybe 58. Anyway, it's hard for me to read. I don't have my reading glasses on, but I know the Lord guides me. Sometimes I don't listen. So when the Lord is guiding you, listening is super important. And I know I struggle with that. I'm sure you guys do at times as well, but maybe this will be a helpful reminder. I've had to make some hard choices, even just today, um, with a friendship, um, in that manner. Um, so anyway, oh goodness, but I didn't mean to go off on that tangent. Anyway, I hope you guys love this idea. It's fabulous on a budget. Now for this next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm taking one of the Dollar Tree birdhouses and these are going to be in the crafter's square section at your local Dollar Tree and they come with just a raw wood. And a couple of days ago I painted this white, um, so I just chalk painted it white. I believe it was one color, one, one coat. Um, and so now I'm just going to take some of this little apple barrel craft paint. I got this at Walmart and I'm just going to add a green roof. And I apologize if you guys can hear Benji Bear in the backyard barking. He, his girlfriend, Shushu Lulu, is back there 
and so he is really causing quite a commotion. Um, but anyway, I'm just going to paint the little top part of my birdhouse green. Now you guys can do any color you want. I think it would even be really cute to make a Mackenzie Child inspired birdhouse um, with like some maybe some little checks or stripes or just something like that. I thought that would be really cute. And so again, I'm just adding some little green tips also to the base of this, but really get creative. Let me tell you, I think that this would be such a fun and amazing little craft to do with your kiddos or your grandkids. And um, just get creative, you guys. Uh, pour some paint and have fun with it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, the next idea I had was to take this piece of scrap wood and then just paint it green and then add that to the base so it kind of looks like it's standing up, you know, like on a little stand, like a little birdhouse would look. And my idea is to even add like a little plate around it and add in some fun little Little moss and some eggs and some goodies like that so here's my little plastic plate I hot glued my birdhouse onto and then I'm adding in just some little leaves here and then I decided to add in some of this decorative moss in and around the base to kind of make it feel I guess like it's like a little fairy garden birdhouse out in the woods might as well <laughs> don't we all need a good fairy garden birdhouse out in the woods in fact that would be kind of something fun to have like an oversized birdhouse um maybe i'll do something like that this year and so now i'm just going to add some little eggs in and around the base of my little fairy garden birdhouse and there it is nestled with my sweet little bunny and there's benji bear scooting around in the background he is such a little stinker you guys every time i get into crafting and decorating he always has to be right next to me but he wants to say hi to you guys Guys. and then there's that sweet little bunny that sweet little bunny came from Tuesday morning I love how she has her beautiful little crown on so fun and fabulous on a budget this next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take this Dollar Tree family sign and I'm just going to chalk paint it white. I love this sign and my sweet friend Stacy sent me this one and then a gather sign which I'm probably going to save until next season until the fall time. Um, but I'm just going to take some white chalk paint and I'm going to chalk paint the family part, the little lettering on the front and then also in and around the sides. You know family is such my heart and I do think it was really cute as is but I'm going to be doing kind of more of like a French country, like really washed out look with my home decor for some of my Easter goodies. I like to do like a lot of pastels and whatnot, but you guys could always paint this to suit your home decor. But here's how it turned out. I think it's so cute. Um, I think it's perfect for Easter. It goes perfectly with my Easter decor right here. So as always, you guys, I ask that you um, comment down below and let me know what your favorite DIY is in this video and which one will you, be, will you be recreating? I know Benji Bear had a big hand in all of these DIYs today. He was the creative director and I can tell you what, he was the best ever. So here he's got these little balls. He gets a bark box every month um, that um, I signed him up for. I just thought he would love that. So they send him um, toys for small animals. So here's his little toy box right here and he was fussing at me. He really wanted me to get his toy box down. Um, I had moved it out of the way just kind of to make the video look more decory. He's looking for his ball. Look at him push all those toys out of the way to find his special yellow ball. So shout out to Benchy Bear and all the puppies who love him that watch my videos. We love y'all and we're so thankful and blessed to have you here. So thank you all so much for joining me on another fun and fabulous crafting and decorating adventure. It's a true blessing and honor to have you all here. Thank you for watching this huge binge-worthy compilation video. These are all of the crafts that we have done so far for this spring and Easter season. And always remember, you guys can change up these ideas to match your home decor by changing the paint colors, the ribbons, the papers, um, just to suit your fancy, basically. So don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on my Libby's Romantic Home Facebook page. I love to keep you guys inspired, crafting and decorating, keeping your hands busy, your minds busy, and making a beautiful space on a budget. If you guys love that, also don't forget to follow me on my Libby's Romantic Home Instagram and TikTok. I share kind of sped up versions of that. You know, I just love to stay inspired to craft and decorate. And also don't forget to binge watch some of my spring, Easter, and then summer um, playlists 
on my YouTube channel. And remember, we're gonna have fall and Christmas coming up. Okay, don't throw anything at me, but you know, my wheels have started turning. Listen, I love you guys so, so much. I always encourage also to be kind online. This is a social media platform, so your comments mean the world to me. I am a one woman show. I buy and create all of my own content. Um, I edit my own content and I'm the marketer for it. So you guys, it's never gonna be perfect, but I'm thankful that you guys are here um, for me and for this. And um, you know, I'm gonna keep producing, crafting and decorating on a budget until the cows come home. Okay, that was kind of awkward, but I love y'all so, so much. Keep going on your crafting and decorating journey. Even if it's not perfect, keep putting one foot in front of the other and your life journey in general. I love y'all to the moon and back. And until our next video, remember, be kind to yourselves and be kind to one another. I will talk to you guys very soon. Bye.